Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Sarah. How is this Virgo day for you? I'd say it's okay. It's pretty good so far. I um can't say I enjoyed the actual middle of the night part of this day. Right. But today is good. That's good. Yeah. It was I'm yeah. a morning person. I'm always okay before about eleven. <laughs> yeah, you probably get up at like four or five though. So that's a whole get day. <laughs> Nobody um, calls you at four in the morning. We're, we're at five thirty in the morning. What's that? Nobody calls you at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, it must be very peaceful. You can think. I mean, it's just for thinking. I think that's why it's the meditative hour. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. exactly why. Yeah. Uh, I'll try it one day. <laughs> uh, so uh, we moved in. We moved into Virgo season. We're in Virgo, yeah. Virgo, officially Virgo. Last sign of summer. I was, I've been enjoying, I know it's obvious, but I've been enjoying meditating on this, this stage of nature that each sign is. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a lifelong joy. If yeah. You yeah. So this, and I, you know, it's, it's just appreciating just how hot Leo season is, mm -hmm. you know, just how. And as, you know, as climate change becomes more and more intrusive so to speak um and and summer doesn't mean like summer fun it means forest fires and you know dangerous aspects of fire i think that holding on to these meditations or contemplations of the seasons and their essence is a is very sorry i interrupted you but no 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 i i agree so here we are virgo season and we're about to have a new moon on saturday yeah on uh, the 20th 7th of August, Saturday at 4.17 a.m. to be precise. Okay. So if anyone wanted to get up and meditate at 4.17, apparently I hear it's a good it's a good thing to do. <laughs> it could, or they could come to the new moon gathering at 7 p.m., a little bit more civilized. I, I might be able to make that one. Um, so what wisdom do you have for us about the new moon coming Saturday? Well, what I wrote in my column, and I guess I'll stand by it, is it's about every little thing. The new moon is at four degrees of Virgo, and Mars is at four degrees of Gemini. And so there's an exact square between them. So um, I think we're all like the fairy tale princesses mm -hmm. who have to sort the seeds from the dirt or the straw from the gold or whatever it is. Oh, that was and my favorite fairy yeah. tale yeah. Oh, yeah so this is the part of the fairy tale where in the fairy tale she goes to sleep and then the ants come or the spirits come and they do the work for her her unconscious does the work for her yeah we, however uh, are are having a lot of trouble sleeping many of us so <laughs> so it's hard to let the unconscious do the work right. but if you can if you can if you feel overwhelmed by the 10,000 or 10 million things that you have to, you know, it's like, it's like sticking plugs into, into sockets and you don't know which one belongs where, and you know, you can screw up everything and Mercury's going to go retrograde. It's a whole mess. What, what an image, a, what an image. <laughs> yeah. But it, remember Ernestine, the party with whom you are speaking. Anyway, it's not a mess if you can let your unconscious do more of the work. Right, which is to ask for dreams, or if you can't dream, you know, if your if your sleep is disturbed, to use that time for meditative, you know, stuff to consult the oracle, to do tarot cards, or whatever, and to oh, use go for an astrology reading, somebody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you could, but it's basically that when you let your in the it's like the fairy tale wisdom. If you let your if you go to sleep, if you let your unconscious help you. It knows how to sort through the unsortable. <clears throat> yes. Okay. That is very good advice. And I see that also in the chart of the new moon, because although, although the moon and the sun are square to Mars exactly, Mars is trining Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. And so um, even though Mars has gone into the, shadow of the retrograde in september it's it's only making um 
this trying to, well, it, it, Mercury is making the trying to Mars. So Mercury will try and Mars. Uh, oh, I guess it'll try and be at the end of August in, in a couple of days. But Mars will sextile Jupiter and it will trine Saturn this month. So um, it, 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 we got the square and we got the agitation, but we've also got a lot of um, strength if we focus our mind. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And you say focus our mind because Mercury is the mind. And, and the Gemini mind. and Virgo together is... Uh, you know, a picture of high anxiety in the mind. It, it's like nervous system ratcheting up. Right. And it requires this, this sense of letting, allowing the unconscious to participate. Right. And uh, we, it's very difficult to do that when we're in anxiety and fear and the Ooh. mind is spinning like a rat. It's very, or a hamster, either one. Depends yeah. what types yeah. of thoughts you're having. <laughs> Yeah. It's squirrel. Rodent. It's a rodent. The okay. mind becomes a rodent. Yeah, when the mind becomes a rodent, mm -hmm. then, then uh, it's very difficult to connect with the unconscious. So there has to be some practices, um, and that's why I think it's really good to do, uh, you know, regular practice. And I, I love your trick that you taught us, um, you know, to take a deck of tarot cards or oracle cards, and at every new moon draw eight cards mm -hmm. and then you have a card for each new phase of the moon which changes every three to four three days, days. Yeah. yeah so i and it never fails when i pull the card out for the new phase you know it doesn't mean anything in the moment but then as the days progress it will it will start to have it will highlight something uh that a theme that's happening or it will it will totally make sense by the end it's of it's like days. having it's like having a, a, a live-in advisor when i'm having trouble and i consult the card i pulled i'm I, i've been doing this for so many years i don't even know how many i'm still blown away by the advice i get from the cards yes it's, yeah. it, it is mind-blowing. Even my daughter, who doesn't even really believe in anything, <laughs> she, sometimes she's like, whoa, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, really? When you yeah. need it. If you don't yeah. need it, you don't need to bother with it. But when you, on the days when you need it, oh my God, it's so useful. Yeah, definitely. So whatever tricks uh, one has, the better. So, and I, I do ask my dreams and I get great wisdom from my dreams as well. So sometimes if you put a, you, you know, your voice recorder or a pen and paper in the old days beside your bed and just when you wake up, just say a few things from the dream and it will start coming. And then by the end of the day or the two days, you'll start to understand a little bit more what it was saying. I did an amazing thing last night when I couldn't sleep. I went looking for the dream. I, I went looking for the, the dream I had before I broke my wrist. Okay. Right? So I decided I would find whatever, you know, even if it was a week or two before. And I found a dream that was about being wounded and um, needing compassion for somebody who was bent and broken. It was wild. You had that and before, I, the dream, like, like, before you yeah, broke your wrist? Oh, my before, goodness. Before before I even went away. I think it was like right around the time I was leaving for the trip for the holiday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And so were you able to have compassion for yourself? Well, the dream certainly. Yeah, I, I am trying to have compassion for my ignorance because it really was ignorance. But I get, I understand, and I understand the breaking of my wrist as a kind of dreamlike experience, like in that it's rich for me to interpret it um, yeah. without, without, you know, there's a big difference in astrology between a sign or the world, between a sign and a symbol, right? A sign is like a stop sign. I know we call the, the zodiac signs, but just for a minute, the sign is like a, a stop sign. You see a stop sign, you stop, right? Very, it, very it literal. Has a, very literal. But a symbol, you look through. You don't look at it. You look through it, mm. right? So if mm -hmm. I look, if I take this as symbolic and I look through it, I find a lot of threads about everything that's going on in my life right now. 
and the connectedness and it helps me to interpret my my experience but that's not the same as saying well i broke my wrist because i didn't want to do what i have to do right it's not a reductive thing it's not like well a equals b right yeah because then you get into blaming the victim <laughs> It tends to, well, like the way you taught us, you know, each sign or symbol, like uh, Leo, say, um, has key words. And you use that word specifically because the key right. helps you to unlock the meaning of the symbol. Because it's, you have to really think with a different part of your brain when you're doing dream work or astrology because it is so symbolic. You have to be able to get to that part of your brain that it and it's probably the same as poetry brain the same the same brain that you need um to to do those things you need for for astrology and the key is like you meditate on it like you said and it opens up the symbol and then the symbol starts to talk to you and that's the the art i guess of doing the astrology or poetry or dream work for sure yeah for sure. so that's that's you know, one of the things that you taught us in your astrology was that. Well, good. I stand by it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So if we unlock these symbols um, of Mars. Okay. So let me see if I have this straight because that was fast. Uh, I'm still, I'm still, I still have to speak the language slowly. It's fine. I go too fast. One so, of the things about being a morning person is <laughs> talk fast. And you have a, a well-placed Gemini <laughs> or well-placed Gemini. I do. Mercury my, my Mercury's in my 12th house, so. Anyway. It's okay. Very, it's very, uh, Mercury in the 12th is very conducive to using your unconscious to understand things. That's right. The problem is that it's difficult to articulate them. I get yeah. them, but it's hard for me to, to then bring them out into this. Trust the process. Yeah. So the sun and the moon are together. They're conjunct because it's a new moon. So they're right. hanging out at the same degree, and that happens at 4.17 a.m. on Saturday. No, 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 4 yep, you got it. And so when the sun and moon are together and they're conjunct, that creates the new moon, and um, that's the beginning of a new cycle. We have that. Right. And this particular one in Virgo, because we're in the season of Virgo, uh, is at 4 degrees of... Virgo and it's going to square Mars at four degrees Gemini that's right okay so those Mercury and Gemini as we talked about are the the thinking in the brain and the nervous system so those are the thing Mars comes in and it's very uh activating Mars and not good or bad just activating can and that can go the way of aggression or the way of initiatory exciting enthusiastic energy so right we can't not have mars because if we had mars no baby would ever get born <laughs> no seed would ever sprout we need mars i guess on both ends of the like the beginning the seed wouldn't get in the womb and then without right. mars the baby wouldn't get out of the womb both ends both ends it gets the baby in and it gets the baby out <laughs> And as you said, it brings the the flowers of spring, right? Like it's that initiatory energy to push up through the hard earth to get the flowers to blossom. So that's Mars in its positive. Mm -hmm. Brings new life. Right. And it's up to us how we use it. I mean, Mars doesn't say make me positive or make me negative. But I have to say this first month of the shadow of Mars retrograde does look like it's giving us a lot of suggestions for how to do it uh, positively next month not so you know in october it's a little bit wonkier like can you give me an example of of, of what examples mars is giving us i don't see them <laughs> well it's only just started and the new yeah. moon isn't until the, the 27th so we're not you know you and i having this conversation is before the new moon right, so it's, right? it's building yeah yeah so I mean, we're almost there but um i i think i mean i want to emphasize the fact that mercury rules both virgo where the new moon is yeah. and gemini where mars is right so mercury the guardian of these both these signs is saying look you guys if you just stress out about this you're missing you're missing a good opportunity because Mercury is favoring, you could say Mercury is favoring Mars because it's right. trining Mars, 
right? Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that the opportunity here is to really look at the, the challenges. You know, like for me, the challenges have to do, let's say, with the numbers I have to crunch right now for, you know, if I'm going to sell and buy a house or, you know, I want to see if this new house we're looking at has a flooding basement. So I have to drag myself over there because it rained last night, you know, those kinds of things, those details. I don't want to do that. I hate the numbers and I hate having to go and do this. But if I do it, you know, if I, if I aim myself at it, because I know that's what should be done mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's no way to do it for me, <laughs> um, then I'm doing the right, you know, I'm pushing myself in the right direction. Right. So everybody has their version of what's being, uh, aggravated with Mars retrograde, potentially. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Aggravated or activated. And so you're, and you're saying like, yes, take the time to do the details without getting overwhelmed or without burning the, uh, the, uh, outlet without all the plugs in it. Like <laughs> without <laughs> plugging <laughs> people to the wrong conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I've done that so many times. I've texted the wrong person. <laughs> text the wrong, text to the wrong person. It's really, yeah, this would be a great, once we get to the new moon, it would be the archetypal month for texting the wrong person. Oh God, okay. Well, I will definitely watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget the email I got by accident about my behavior. <laughs> Somebody sent you one? An email about what a loudmouth New Yorker I I am. Oh, but they weren't saying it to me. They were saying it to someone else. <laughs> Being a loudmouth New Yorker, though, I kind of thought it was funny. And you're like, "Yep, that's who I am." <laughs> Take it or leave it. <laughs> Better than being a repressed Torontonian. But anyway, um, okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm just thinking that the mars at four degrees gemini will be kind of conjunct my saturn yes 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 yikes okay. step up commitment <laughs> like what 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 is it and you're you're starting in the sixth right yeah so it's your work it's your yeah. work and all that you have to do to push it to get it to the next level to oh that's interesting because i I did uh, get news that I, I was accepted and received to the acupuncture college and I'm now, I just have to pay a thousand dollars and I will be a member of the um, uh, acupuncture association. Or oh my God, that's Mars. And the thing that is like, everyone's like, oh my God, it's so exciting. I'm like, mm, it's a lot of work now. It's a lot more work because I have to organize everything and exactly mm -hmm. that it's like i have to get the file set up i have to get the organization of it set up so it's it is really very sick house so the the new moon is actually um <laughs> and mars is also opposing your neptune and the new moon is squaring your neptune and squaring your saturn right okay. so the yeah. new moon happens in your eighth house and so you want you want an intention I mean, basically, it could just be an intention not to be intimidated by the red tape. Okay. I don't, you know, generally, I, I <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> and if you need help, if you need someone to, you know, help you who's better at, at numbers or whatever than you are, that would be fine. Well, I did have an idea about starting a... Um, a company called hire a Virgo <laughs> and then just be like a pool of Virgos that you could you could <laughs> pull from to do your admin work and things exactly like this so great idea we get on that great idea <laughs> so the thing to also look at is since we're doing this is that Mars in its journey through Gemini is going to be in your sixth house for six months great it's going to make it to your seventh house cusp where there'll be some kind of uh, energetic interaction and then it'll go back into your sixth house again. So getting all this together and getting your work to the next level is absolutely 
uh, the right thing to do. And that is absolutely what is on my mind these days. So awesome. Awesome. that all, again, blows my mind. Makes sense. Blows my mind. Yeah. I know. Um, it's always fun. Astrology is always fun. It is always fun. I was talking with Felicia yesterday, another friend of ours, and I was saying, like, is there some way to do, like, a reality astrology show? Like, somehow. <laughs> one story after another. One yeah. mind-blowing story of synchronicity after another. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. we look at somebody's transit before, and then we film them in their life as it unfolds. Something like that. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, is that that does bring us to the, we talked about, we've teased about the, the Mars retrograde coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we're in the shadow of it, like you said. And then, yeah, so we have Mars retrograde coming. Mars isn't actually retrograde till October 30th, but Mercury is going to be retrograde on September 9th. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> Um, well, it's gonna go. It's gonna go retrograde, trining Mars, but it's gonna go direct, squaring Mars. Okay. So it's all about Mercury is interacting very strongly with Mars. You can see it right from the new moon. Right. Okay. So the oh, yeah. thing to be careful of is aggression, verbal aggression. Verbal aggression, in particular. Yeah. Um, although, you know, we could also be nervous about nuclear power plants in the Ukraine, but maybe we don't need to go there because there's not a whole lot we can do about that. But the um, thing that you cannot unsay. Right. Yes, I think um, that's very important. I had, a, I had an episode with that on the weekend where I got a group, there's a group text and um, I had to text somebody else in the group. <laughs> to ask them to help me to not react. <laughs> Please help me not respond. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that yeah. was a good that was a good choice because just the, in the texting the other person to like hold my hand <laughs> so that yeah. I didn't say something. Now I that would be back. that would only backfire if you thought you were texting somebody <laughs> who could help you when you actually texted the person you were having to not react to. But yes. <laughs> yes, that is a good example of what could happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah so so yeah working on not reacting verbally or through text <laughs> that's good so but, uh, but it's not it, mercury retrograde isn't just about not reacting it's also about considering processing uh sorting and allowing life to show you Right. There's something positive that we do with Mercury retrograde. People focus on all the things that we shouldn't do in Mercury's retrograde. But if we move slowly enough and allow ourselves to integrate um, what's happening, then we tend to um, get something out of Mercury retrograde, which is quite positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mercury is going to go Mercury is going to oppose Jupiter on September 2nd. Then it's going to go retrograde on the 9th, and then it's going to oppose Jupiter again on the 18th. So that Mercury-Jupiter opposition is definitely, oppositions are always about opposition. But opposition can be about cooperation or competition, you know, or both, right? Right, and they and they can be opposition so, so that there can be synthesis. That's right. So, you know, like in a debate, it's it's good to listen to both sides so that you can synthesize both sides together so there can be value in, in and that. Sometimes so. it's really hard. <laughs> Just the other thing, the other thing about Mercury retrograde that I find really interesting this time is that this week, um, here at the end of August, Mercury is going to or it has already trined um Pluto. Um, this is this is a bit sticky for people who don't who haven't been following along. But yeah, Mercury trined Pluto on Monday, on the twenty second of August. Okay. And Mercury will try and go retrograde, and it will try and Pluto again um, on the twenty seventh of September, and then it will go direct uh, on October second or whatever, and it will try and Pluto one more time. Okay. So this is interesting because the last Mercury retrograde 
was a conjunction with Pluto. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, so you can see that Mercury is hooking into Pluto energy throughout the year. Right. And that is truly a call to think differently about old problems, especially systemic ones, because it's Capricorn and Virgo. Right. Yeah, and you, I get this idea when you're talking, the way that you describe it, it's like they've got a, like a telephone line to each other, and so you've got these themes, right, of, of <clears throat> being able, and also a lot of people needed therapy during this season, right, so like a lot of talking about deeper issues and talking yeah. about deep systemic issues, that's for sure. Like, And the big issue is the fact that we cannot disconnect ourselves from the planetary angst. Yeah. We are not separate from nature and we don't we hate that yeah yeah we talked about that a little bit last time um yeah so then we've got so we had that theme of the mercury trining pluto and now we have the the theme also of mercury and pluto uh, mercury and, and jupiter mars. and jupiter. mercury and mars and mercury and jupiter mercury is very busy <laughs> Usually it's very busy, but it's extra very busy. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I mean, if we're unpacking it, it just looks to me like it looks to me like September is an interestingly positive month to put stuff in order for October and November, which might be more chaotic. Okay. Okay. That's a that's a stay tuned for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be true for someone, even if it's not true for everyone. But I think it. it I think there's an overarching thing about it. Well, it, I mean, just from when you say that, that feels very true already. Like things, I do feel like things definitely need to be put in order right now. So, okay. So that's that's what's coming. And then, so we've got the Mercury retrograde. And when does that finish? Uh, October 2nd, I believe. Um, I memorize these things because I never can find my book. Um, Mercury is direct on October 2nd. I was right. Okay. All right. So these are some um, <clears throat> good dates to keep in mind. And if anybody wants to go to your monthly insights, then you... Yep, they're, up they're, they're up there. They're now up there. Mm -hmm. And so you can go and have a look at each of these and that will reinforce some of the things we've talked about. And I'll put that link. Thank um, you. In the description so that people can go in and, and reflect on some of the insights that you've said. I think that as far as the link goes, I think you have to just put the link from my website and then people have to go to monthly insights and find it because when I use the link for the actual insights, it never works. Does it? Okay. Well, I'll try it out and I'll see. I'll see, I'll see both, but yeah. if it doesn't, you can, it's pretty easy to find if you just go to the website. It's very easy. You just yeah. click on insights and it'll pop up. So. Okay. So let's just say that the full moon on the 10th of September um, is at 17 degrees of Pisces and it's sextiling Uranus. Okay. Right? So that's also a kind of possible, you know, looking ahead at possibilities uh at the full moon also i mean i always think that the full moon at in virgo when the moon is in pisces and the sun is in virgo also when the sun is in pisces and the moon is in virgo is about devotion it's about really looking at how you walk your talk you know in, in a meaningful soul felt way but the fact that it makes a favorable aspect to uranus says that you know somewhere in our lives change is good and it would be okay to allow for that truth. I have to take my own advice. <laughs> okay, I'll remind you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, September 17th. No, that's September 10th. September 10th. At, At 17, 17 degrees. degrees. Okay, got it. Right, because it's on the uh, Pisces-Virgo axis, which does have to do with... Uh, spirituality but devotion like in a real way with Virgo yeah yeah right of being of service mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it sextiles Uranus which is ideas and spirituality and what other keywords would you say for Uranus change I think I think when when 
when you have a softer aspect, so to speak, to Uranus, it's change. When you have a harder aspect, it's chaos. Oh, okay. Right? But chaos is just change moving too fast. Just. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we'll do another one for the full moon as it gets closer, I think. Like in okay. And, and also for Mar Mars, for the October journey of Mars retrograde also. Yeah. yeah. We'll all get, we're all busy. We're all too busy preparing with all the details to think about October right now. So. Yes, we are the fairy tale princesses or, and the squirrels and the, the rodents. Okay. The helpful, <laughs> the helpful rodents. The helpful rodents. That's what we will name this video, the helpful rodents. <laughs> Maybe you could not use the word rodent. You could just say the helpers. The helpers. Okay. <laughs> this is fine though you could do that <laughs> all right okay julie thanks so much for your insights well thank you sarah good luck looking at your home thank your you. possible new home my possible new home yes <laughs>